another crocodile larger and more dangerous than the Orinoco crocodile has also been saved thanks to the economic returns it has begun to generate. Measuring up to eight meters in length, the saltwater crocodile is the largest reptile in the world. Its aggressiveness has earned it the name of devourer of men, and its strength has made it a god and demon for the natives of Southeast Asia and Oceania. The Australian Aborigine god, Ginka, the demon of the crocodile men of New Guinea, the nightmare of the first Australian colonists. With good reason, it has been feared by all. In these waters, no one is safe from this powerful dragon, which, however, lost its invincibility with the arrival of firearms. Indiscriminate hunting almost entirely wiped out the saltwater crocodile. But then a new alternative occurred to the Australian naturalists and farmers, an alternative that would save the life of the species. The crocodile farms were the paradoxical salvation of these powerful reptiles. The owners of the lands through which the rivers containing crocodiles flowed killed them due to the danger they represented for them and their cattle. But the crocodile farms pay considerable amounts for the eggs of these animals, and the landowners have begun to consider the crocodiles as simply another source of income. On the other hand, on the farms they incubate the eggs and some of the animals are returned to their natural habitat after the first days of their lives when the crocodiles are most vulnerable. And at the same time, they obtain more eggs on the same farms because some adult females are used for breeding. Obviously, for all this, the crocodiles have had to pay a very high price. The skin of the estuarine crocodiles is the best leather in the world, and for this skin great amounts of money are paid. But even so, for the saltwater crocodile, the overall balance is favorable, and for the crocodile farmers too, because along with the leather, new sources of income have appeared in the form of tourism. On the same farms where they sell the crocodile skin, they are starting to put on shows so the public can get to know and admire this powerful reptile. In June, there are 40 saltwater crocodiles, of which there are 20 males and 20. And here too, the scientists contracted by the farms carry out important studies which help in the conservation of their populations in the wild. And the talks and teachings of the monitors on the farms show how to avoid attacks by this super predator while they educate people to admire and value the surviving relic from past eras. This is the cornerstone of the new conservation, the hope for threatened species and ecosystems. Tourism which is willing to pay considerable amounts of money in order to enjoy the last natural areas still remaining in their original state. A different kind of tourism is spreading around the entire world. These new travelers go in search of re-encounters with nature, 
feeling the ancestral pull of our origins, the irresistible call of virgin lands. New infrastructure opens up many of these places to ecotourism, allowing children and the elderly to also enjoy them. Every day, new natural areas are opened up to tourism. Former areas of hunting and deforestation are now visited by nature lovers who finance their conservation. And travelers can approach species that just a few years ago they would have believed to be dangerous and fearsome. These new travelers are discovering a friendlier, more accessible nature. Ancient monsters are now greatly appreciated by these daring tourists. And well-trained guides dispel extremely widespread taboos, showing the reality of nature and her species. The income earned from ecological tourism goes beyond the new conservation. The new ecotourism projects also take into consideration the local native communities who are given priority in their management. From these communities come the guides and guards of the reserves, the owners of the accommodation in which the tourists stay, the craftsmen who sell them souvenirs. Sources of income that have changed the attitude of local people. Former poachers have become reserve wardens, and those who were forced to burn and cut down in order to obtain a miserable harvest now watch over the forest that feeds their community and are paid to do so. Winds of hope are blowing for nature, which stands on the very edge of the abyss and a common promising future is now opening up for the last natural sanctuaries and their inhabitants, including the most controversial and adaptable species of all, the only one that has the capacity to correct its mistakes, us human beings. <laughs>